All right, hello everyone. So this is going to be another video about vector spaces. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, more examples of vector spaces. So different different types of, of vector spaces that you might see in linear algebra, um, and and they'll probably come in handy once you start doing bases and linear transformations and things like that. Okay, so we already saw the um, vector space Rn, right? Rn is, is just a set of n by 1. It's the set of n by 1 vectors. Um, and, and of course, you can sort of, you can use any n, really, and it will be a vector space. So it could be R2, which we know quite well. Those are the vectors that look like 2, 1. But it can also be any arbitrary number. Um, so it could be R, you know, 77 seven, or whatever. Or it can be anything you want, really. And it will be a vector space. Um, the next vector space I want to talk about is what we call PNR. Okay. So um, each of these uh, each of these letters has has a reason for being there. So the P just stands for polynomials. So I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and the N and the R, okay, let me just give you the definition then. So, uh, vaguely speaking, PNR is the set of all polynomials, 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 so that's where P comes from, the set of all polynomials uh, with degree, with degree at most n, so that's where the n comes from, um, and with real coefficients, with real coefficients, so that's where the r comes in, okay, coefficient. So um, if if this r here, if this r, this guy here, had been you know p n uh, z then it would be the set of all polynomials of degree at most n with, in that case, it would be an integer coefficient. But in this case, um, it's the, the set of all polynomials of degree at most n with real coefficients. And so the more formal way of writing this, if you want, so the more formal way of writing this is you take the most arbitrary polynomial you can think of. And so you have a naught, which is just a constant, um, plus a1 to the x. So that's the degree 1 polynomial plus a square x square. And then you continue adding these up until, you guessed it, a n x to the n. And we have a such that, such that, a naught, a1 through a n belong to the real numbers. Okay. So that's the more formal definition of PNR. Okay. So I can give you an example. Um, uh, an example could be, you know, if I say f of x equals x plus root 2 x cubed plus 6 x to the 4 minus 3. Well, um, these are all polynomials of different degrees, right? Think of this as just x to the 0, even though we don't never really write that, because we know it's just 1. And then we have we have our coefficients here, so we have 1 here, a hidden 1. Then we have root 2, which is irrational but real. We have an integer, and we have another integer. So that's an example of a vector um, that belongs to PNR. Even though vector is really used as a broad sort of term, and really, in this case, we call them polynomials. Um, so, to to show that this is actually oh, and of course, of course, you need to define uh, the two basic operations. So, um, the two operations that we define, which are vector addition and scalar multiplication. So, vector addition, um, vector addition is defined. Really, how you might 
think it would be. So for vector addition, if we have two polynomials f and g that belong to p and r, then we can write f as a naught plus a one x plus dot 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 until a n x to the n. Um, and we can write here's a different. Uh, we can write g as b naught plus b one x plus dot 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 plus b n x to the n. So vector addition in this case, when we do f and we have a plus and then we do f plus g, then this is equal to um, what essentially what you do is you take the um, similar polynomials, similar degrees, um, and you take their coefficients and you add them up. So in this case, you would add a naught plus b naught and then a1x plus b1x, and then so on, until an x to the n, bn x to the n. So really it's how you were thought, um, how you were taught to do polynomial addition. So you would have a naught, and then plus, plus b naught, and then you would have, you would have plus, Okay, and then I'm I'm not gonna continue continue switching colors. So a one x a one plus b one x, and so on until a n plus b n x to the n. Okay, so that's how you would define a vector addition in PNI. And then scalar multiplication is also what you probably suspect. So for scalar multiplication. What we have is if we let f belong to p and r, and some scalar c belong to the real numbers, okay, then if we do c times f, right, c scalar multiply, so the dot signifies scalar multiplication, and f is defined as as before, so my f was um, this guy, right? So if I do c scalar multiplied f, and I just have c times a naught plus a one x plus and so on until a n x to the n, and then what I can do is I can just distribute. I can distribute my c here and here and so on. So here, everywhere here, until a n. And what I get, what, I, what I'm left with, is really c times a0. And now this is, this is a number multiplication, so it's over r. Number multiplication. And similarly here, actually, this is, this is an addition over r, right? Because both of these belong to the real numbers. So you have plus c times a1 times x, and so on, until c times an, x to the n. So that's how you have, that's how we typically define vector addition and scalar multiplication in PNR. And um, so we would obviously have to show axioms 1 through 8. I'm not going to do that because really the, the proofs are, are similar. Um, maybe I could do um, I could do well I could do the axiom one I suppose just to like show you how you go about it so in general axiom one says that for all u and v belonging to v which is my vector space u plus v is equal to v plus u so we're saying that um, addition is associative Okay, so let's check this for um, P and R. So suppose, suppose, no, suppose, again, I'm going to use F and G. F and G belong to P and R. Okay, then um, I'm going to rewrite F as a naught 
to a n x to the n, and then g as b naught dot 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 plus b n x to the n. Okay, so what I'm trying, so my goal, my goal is to show, so my goal is to show that f plus g is equal to g plus f. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my left hand side and try to get to the right hand side that I want that I want to be true. Okay. So I start with my left hand side, which is f plus g. And so um, I rewrite what that is it's a naught plus dot 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 plus a n x to the n plus b naught plus dot 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 plus b n x to the n okay and then i i know i know how to add over p n r now because i gave it as a definition right i said that you have to add each sort of coefficient together and then factor the polynomial you have for that degree Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So this is equal to, by definition, a0 plus b0 plus a1 plus b1x, and so on, until a n plus b n x to the n. So this we could say is by definition. Okay? And so now what we can do, we can say that because this guy belongs to R, um, we know that addition is commutative over R. That is, if I have 1 plus root 2, then I know that that's equal to root 2 plus 1. Okay, so we can use the same thing for two arbitrary numbers. So these are just arbitrary numbers in R. So we can just flip them. We can flip the addition and write b not, b not plus a0 plus b1 plus a1 x and so on until bn plus a n x to the n. Okay, so this is really similar to one of the proofs I did in, in Rn. Um, okay, so I know, so this actually uh, looks like the coefficient from g plus the coefficient from f. So now what I can do is I can re-separate my addition into into these two these two guys. So this guy and that guy. Because if I could do it one way, then I can do it the other way. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna re-separate it. And I'm gonna get B naught plus B one X and so on until B N X to the N. And then I add up A naught plus a1x, a1x, and so on, until a n x to the n. And so I, I, I've essentially proved what I was after. So this guy here is actually g, okay? And this guy here is actually f. So what I've done is I've proved that f plus g is equal to g plus f over p n r. So that proves, so that proves axiom one, and axiom axioms two through eight would be really proved the same way. So that was another example on vector spaces um, called PNR, the set of polynomials of degree at most. Anyway.